Hi everyone, I'm Ollie from Turnstone Games and on today's game night review I'm going to be reviewing the games I played at some board game nights in Singapore last week. So one of the games we played was called Five Minute Dungeon. Um, now let me say first of all that the artwork on this game was really great and some of the cards were were really interesting to look at, it had a good sense of humour, but a big problem with this game is you didn't get to look at the cards. So, um, five minute dungeon, the clue's in the name, the game lasts five minutes long, and essentially what you're doing is you're working together with other players to resolve all of the challenges within a deck of cards within five minutes. And so the thing is, you're turning over those cards, and you're desperately trying to resolve those challenges as quickly as possible and you normally do within five seconds or so and then you move on to the next card so the artwork on that card is just completely wasted and completely missed um, you don't get the the joke of the card because you're not looking at the picture you're just looking at the symbols at the bottom of the card that show you what challenges what cards you need to play from your hand in order to to defeat that card so um yes yeah, so it was really strange how They've put all that effort into the artwork and the cards, um, not, but you don't actually get to appreciate them. I mean, someone suggested that they have made the cards that way so that it makes it distracting, so that that slows you down, um, but I'm not sure if that was their, their intention, really. Um, on the whole, I didn't enjoy it as a game. I felt that despite the... I mean, it's quite an interesting idea, the idea of having to rush through a game as quickly as possible and creating that tense atmosphere, but it just wasn't there for me. I felt very unengaged and um, completely not caring whether or not we got to the end of this deck of cards um, or not. So yeah, I was quite glad when we finished playing it, really. So yeah, that was a five-minute dungeon. The next game we played was so much better. One of the best games I've played in a while, actually, um, and that was Secret Hitler. Um, so in Secret Hitler, um, you're divided into two teams of liberals and fascists, but it's a hidden identity game, so you don't know the identity of the other players. Only the fascists know who the other fascists are, but Hitler, who's one of the fascists, doesn't know who any of the other fascists are. So it's um, just like the Resistance and Werewolf, where you're throwing accusations around the table, trying to figure out who's um, who's the fascist so you can um, so you can denounce them to the rest of the group essentially and try and get forward the uh, liberal policies but if you're on the fascist side you're trying to get fascist policies put forward and um, it works really well I mean I won't go into the exact details of how um, the gameplay works but it's just so much fun so engaging I mean we played with around seven players um, and it was really really good fun um, the accusations were flying all over the place. Uh, it was just brilliant um, getting to shout at each other um, like, like that. So yeah, really, really fun experience and I really recommend it. I don't know what's the fewest amount you could play it with. I mean, you probably could play it with five, but I reckon the more people you have, the better experience for the game you're going to have. Um, yeah, so fully recommend it. That's Secret Hitler. Another game I played that weekend was Coup. Um, Coup is also a hidden identity game um, that is great fun um, in which you're competing with other players trying to use um, character cards that are in your hands to defeat other players. Um, essentially the two character cards you have are your two lives and each time that you're successfully attacked by another player you have to discard one of your cards. Now so there's I think around um, there's around six different characters and each character has its own special ability that you can activate on your turn. Now, the cards you've got in your hand are hidden, and you can activate any character's ability. So it's a bluffing game. You can pretend to be the duke, you can pretend to be the assassin, um, to, to activate their powers, and try and push your luck and see if anyone challenges you. Um, there's a lot of risk-taking in the game of trying to think, am I going to push this push this um, this lie forward in the hope of getting great rewards um, or am I going to play it more safe? Um, so it's a brilliant game for bluffing and trying to get inside other people's heads and, um, and yeah, make them make bad decisions. So a lot of fun. I really recommend it. Very, very short as well. So 
it's a great game that you can play lots of rounds of very quickly. Um, so if you haven't played it already, check it out. That's cool. So that's all for this week's Game Night Review. Um, didn't get to play as many new games this week because I've actually been playtesting my own game, Curiosa, a lot um, at the Game Nights in Singapore as well as um, go, coming back to KL to do um, go to a playtesting night there. So, I mean, it's been really great, but it has meant I haven't had as much opportunity to play other games, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, so this week, however, um, I'm going to be going to uh, Jakarta in Indonesia. I'm going to a couple of board game events there, so hopefully I'll try out some new games there and I'll be able to review those um, sort of next week at some point. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you haven't done already, please subscribe to, to uh, the Turnstone Games channel and we'll see you next time.